did Polarium steal the concept for Ramon 2 Drake Split? So, by Tim, somebody who is pretty prominent in my own little raid community here, sent me this video and asked me to present my thoughts on it. And when I uh, opened up the video, uh, I noticed it was Upper Echelon, somebody who I've seen before, they do, or he does reviews on like other games and, you know, the gaming world, industry and whatnot. Um, but he did do this video called Raid Stolen Legends, and then he also has done other video reviews on Raid. Uh, Raid Garbage Legends, uh, the predatory truth about Raid Casino Legends, and those got a lot of views, those are pretty well known. But I wanted to watch this particular video, uh, since it was the one that was brought to my attention. And I watched like the first two minutes of it already, and I thought to myself, why not share this with you guys? Now I have no real opinion on any of this quite yet. I guess I'll kind of give you my my thoughts as I as I watch this. But um, yeah, uh, it this is just a video game, guys. Remember that this is just a video game, so uh, take everything with a grain of salt. Also, the thumbnail that I got does not belong to me. This thumbnail that you see for this video, uh, for my video, was ironically stolen from Upper Echelon. Um, so yeah, that's his thumbnail, not my thumbnail. Just wanted to point that out. But let's let's see what, what he's got to say. This video is brought to you by Rage... I'm just kidding. It's brought to you by Manscaped. Stick around to hear more about the discount that they're providing to the entire Upper Echelon community. Okay, today is going to be the third video in a series of previous videos about Raid Shadow Legends. Episode 1 was Raid Garbage Legends, also the most popular video I believe I have ever made in the channel's entire history. Episode 2 was Raid Casino Legends, which is a great watch and I'll link it down below. And now Episode 3, Raid Stolen Legends. As a precursor before the actual story here, this concept revolves around artwork that appears to have been taken, without credit I might add, from an independent artist, and that artist is also the creator of the thumbnail for this very video, with his portrait. Okay, so that's the artist's thumbnail with Romantu. It, it blatantly looks like Romantu, but I didn't know about this. This to me right now is an accusation, but I'm pretty sure Upper Echelon, uh, he's pretty trust trustworthy. I'm pretty sure he's going to break it down for us portfolio and social media links down below. He does excellent work, he is open for commissions right now, and I highly recommend checking out his content. Again, links- But by the way, this video came out two years ago. Apparently this has been out for a while, so I, I don't know why I've never heard about this before. So what's the story? Simply put, Raid Shadow Legends, owned and operated by Plarium Games, appears to have taken a champion concept submission from a promotional event without acknowledging the origins of that material, without awarding the listed prize pool to the artist, and while claiming that they themselves created the champion back in January of 2019, only to ignore the artist responsible after agreeing to a voice call with him, making the entire situation both suspect and rather bizarre. It all starts with a community competition. December Wait, so... Raid? I'm trying to like take in what he just said. He said that Raid claimed to have had made this character, Ramantu, in 2019. That Raid actually spoke with the artist of the thumbnail for this character. Let's keep watching. November 9th of 2020, Plarium Games takes to Facebook and posts a thread about their open submission community champion design contest. The rules of this contest are fairly simple, and the rewards are, for the most part, a selection of in-game currency and items. The competition would run from December to January of 2021, December 2020 to January 2021 that is, and at the very bottom is a disclaimer which reads as follows. By taking part in the contest, you agree that any data, text, information, files, graphics, photographs, along with their selection and arrangement, uploaded, posted to, emailed, transmitted, or otherwise made available through the contest, are subject, whether in whole or in part, to unlimited commercial, non-commercial, and or promotional use by Plarium as per Article 13 of the Terms of Use. Yeah, and that's, that's pretty standard. I mean, we, we all know that Raid um, does that. They they throw contests. And in fact, like the last video or, or two that I just did, talking about the the character that Bytem created, um, I talked about a contest. I mean, that was the contest for Snick Track, for Cavalax. Those characters were created by artists who shared it with Raid, and they became actual characters. But now Polarium owns the rights to those characters. Now, it's actually up for debate whether or not the terms of use or terms of service for Polarium Games represents an actual legally binding contract, and yeah. thus whether or not this paragraph is even legally enforceable. Yeah, because, I mean, anybody could put 
in their community post, um, you know, or, or raid could put in their Facebook post, you know, according to Article 13, yada, 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 this is basically ours, whatever you share with us. But is it a legally binding document? That's the question. That seems to vary on a case by case basis rather drastically. But even if we assume that this would be legally binding and fully airtight, the entire situation top to bottom would still become a series of what appear to be false statements and manipulations in the pursuit of using an artistic concept without acknowledging or crediting ever the source. And in my opinion, that's worth making a video on. Do you guys think that that is something Polarium would do? You let me know. Sponsor time. Manscaped, trust it. Okay, Products and quality making this a partnership channel. So what happened? Well, after the design contest kicked off, a large number of artists began to submit their champions, and among them was an artist who had conceptualized a lizard man sacrificial warrior. This lizard man could be summarized as a winged, spear-wielding, support-slash-attack champion named Kazal Khan, and the submission was so in-depth it even came with an ability kit and various wow. lore explanations on top of it. Hold on, look at that, guys. I hey guess this guy... He looks like Romantu, like the beginnings of Romantu. He's got the spear, the wings, looks like a Drake, Drake's blood, exactly. But look at this kit here. Current Romantu, and we have the supposed Romantu over here. So his first move um, over here is attacks one enemy two times, places poisons and HP burns for two turns. This Romantu has the stun and uh, increased cooldowns on his A1 and you know other stuff. The A2 on the original one is remove all debuffs from all allies, then fully heals them, places a block buff, and revive on death on all allies for two turns. Whereas the A2 for Romantu uh, lands this plethora of debuffs. And his A3, the original Romantu, attacks one enemy, removes all buffs from the target, then places them on this champion, then attacks all enemies. The second hit has a 50% chance to apply all debuffs on the first target to all enemies. That sounds insane, um, but it's different here. It's an AOE block active, block passive skills with, the, with a uh, buff removal. And then the passive ceremonial leader increased the speed of this champion by 5% for each buff on this champion when attacked. 30% chance to place leech on the attacker whereas this passive is whenever an enemy places a any of these debuffs it instantly fills this champion's turn meter by 30% placing increased speed and a shield on him and the shield is equal to his max hp now uh let's go ahead and see what more he has to say but that it, it's pretty clear that these skills are different in my experience Whenever somebody does present a list of skills or anything, or even just like the artwork itself, right here, Polarium will still take the champion and edit it the way that they would like to, have their art team work on this, and then they have to, you know, revamp the skills, obviously, to make it uh, fit their overall agenda. Uh, we can't have too many things that are, like, completely cracked. I mean, a poison and an HP burn on an A1, on an A1, that's pretty bonkers in it of itself. Like all these other things are pretty nice too, but yeah. So there's that. Let's go ahead and continue the video. Of that. Upon the conclusion of the contest, which was January 8th, I believe, three finalists were chosen and the community then voted on the winner. The winning design was a Black Knight, I think, not our Lizard Man, but that's just where it begins. Later, on January 18th, there is a larger Artist's Choice post about the competition that there's goes Cavalex. live on the Plarium Facebook page, and included among those submissions was Kazal Khan. This establishes one very key thing here. The design was seen and liked, if you will, by the team at Plarium Games. Fast forward to early May and Plarium Games fires off a Discord post for patch 4.20 containing a new champion named Ramantu Drakesblood, uh... but what they don't say is anything at all about Kazal Khan. Ramantu Drakesblood is not some random new champion in the randomized pool, he is an exclusive reward for completing a series of highly difficult challenges and missions, which, as of yet, if I am actually properly informed, no one has been able to complete. This means that he is an extremely sought after commodity that can only be acquired through a very heavy time investment, and that makes him valuable to Plarium. Extremely Two years so, ago, by the way. If we understand that the game is heavily predicated on microtransaction spending. 
Now, that would be fine if Ramon II Drake's Blood wasn't effectively a carbon copy of Kazal Khan. And to underline exactly how similar these two champions actually are, we can look at a number of different features. One, bipedal lizard man with wings. This is not an archetype that existed in Raid before that point, as far as True. I can tell. Two, frilled neckline surrounding raptor features. Three, dagger tipped spear as a weapon. Four, tail and spike pattern, completely. Five, wing design with prominent mid level spikes. And six, a loincloth portion of the armor. These two designs are undeniably extremely similar, and taking yeah. notice of this fact, the artists behind the submission decided to reach out to the Plarium moderators on Discord. What followed was an extended exchange where the lead moderator in the community, acknowledging that the designs were, and I quote here, pretty damn close, I'll message the community managers, pushed his inquiry up the chain, which then resulted in a claim by said community managers that they would contact the artist for a conversation. That never actually happened. Instead, after days of zero communication, the artist reached out again via the same email that he had used for the design submission in the first place and managed to receive a response. Here's what it said. Hi, we are out of the office till Tuesday due to national holidays, but I'll try to give you as much details as I have. The Ramontu concept was created and approved on January 2019, a year before the Community Champion contest was announced. Since our production pipeline for new features and champions requires a lot of time, some of the new content is released in the game with a delay. Dragon-ish Ramontu was on a bench waiting for their balance. We won't use your concept without letting you know, agreeing on the terms and conditions. That's a huge legal and reputation damage company with, this is almost gibberish, the, the grammar's really horrible yep. that's a huge legal and reputation damage company would take after acting with violating intellectual property rights certainly i'll double check dates of romantu's creation once our art department will be back in the office let me come back to you with more information early next week stay stay safe and have a lovely weekend so just to recap what happened they didn't accept or like his original art design for drake for drake's blood or or kazar uh, whatever his name is uh didn't officially when it was somebody else but they still kept the idea or it's assumed judging based on ue's uh video that they still kept him in the pool of artist competitions like they they still acknowledged that he was an awesome looking champion and out of nowhere i guess in may when they released ramon to with another update within raid they said hey um this is a new champion you guys get you guys already know um doing xyz missions finishing out the the mission timeline whatever and so when the artist who originally came out with the idea the design for Montu drake's blood saw that he immediately tried to contact the discord server mods said hey what's up with this polarium eventually got back to him and said hey let's go ahead and jump on a call that never happened and then he hit them up again, and this is the response. Not really acknowledging anything, but rather saying something along the lines of, we didn't do it. Like, we, we already had this idea way before the contest was even out. So, you know, uh, th this is not your idea. We've had this idea. We're just we're just sitting. We, we were sitting on this for, for quite some time. So, uh, you know, calm down, artist. This is not your. We, we, we had this Ch source. Trust me, bro safe and have a lovely weekend. That was a perfectly adequate response, but also contained some very key details. One, we won't use your concept without letting you know, agreeing on the terms of service. Two, huge reputation damage to the company for violating intellectual property rights, as per their own words. And three, the concept was created in January of 2019. And also, as per that email, there was a follow-up which contained more information. Quote, Hi, I double checked the information, double checked the information. The double very check. first draft concept was made on 4th of January, 2019. There were six types of coloring, but we decided to move on with a blue option. And the final concept was approved on the 10th of May, 2019. The 3D model of the character was created later on the 13th of September. From the very beginning, Ramantu was a powerful dragonish champion. Please let me know if you need any additional information from my side, or if you'd like Ooh, to set way. up a call. The follow-up doubled down on this being a concept from January 2019, it yeah. also sort of fixated on the coloring, and additionally extended a formal offer to have a call if he would like additional information. And that is an offer he decided to accept, stating quite plainly, Hi, yes, I think we should set up a call. What times could work for you? I'm CET Stockholm. This email actually went unanswered, and when he followed up again after that, Plarium finally responded by saying, quote, Hi, could you please write down questions that you have or let me know what other information you would like to get for me just to know how to make our communication more insightful and useful, end quote.
Since the artist was only doing this to understand further what had happened, or perhaps not happened, and how everything had ended up this way, he did not have a list of specific questions at that time. Merely wanted to understand in a more long-form, yeah. open-ended forum what the process and timeline had actually looked like. I mean, I guess it makes sense, right? If you if you put yourself in in his shoes as as an as an artist, somebody a big company just straight up takes or you you are led to believe, and this is pretty damning evidence or not it's not like damning evidence but it's pretty like you know what i mean like it's kind of like uh, it, it looks it looks like you guys took my shit you know what i mean i'm not saying that's what happened i'm just saying it, it kind of looks like they might have taken his shit you know what i mean um i'd be pretty mad too i wouldn't have a list of questions i'd probably just be like hey man let's 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 talk like what's going on here like let's let's connect i, I want to know what, what you guys are doing here because it's not cool bro but upon stating that to them, in email form, he was completely ignored. He sent a follow-up after that again, but ultimately, that's how it ended. Numerous times where Plarium had ceased communicating with him, their own statement that they wanted to avoid reputational damage, their offer for a formal conference call... Or of and here, let me just hit on that. Uh, you know, Plarium trying to avoid uh, reputational damage. Uh, can any of you guys... Share your thoughts on that specific statement about Polarium, the company, ruining their reputation. Of some kind, but then nothing. Silence. Here's the part where some people will begin to speculate and say, well, the designs aren't exactly the same, which is true. Yeah. There are certain discrepancies in the bone structure, for example, such as a split jaw mandible for one. But when analyzing the situation, there is a layer that we haven't yet touched on. Kazal Khan, the original artistic concept for the competition, was a support slash attack champion, and Ramon II Drake's Blood, Dark's Blood, whatever, is exclusively attack based. The ability kit for these champions, however, well, le let me just read some things off here. Kazal Khan, in his ability kit submission, has his best ability listed as a strong flying attack, where he attacks all enemies with a portion that removes buffs, yes. then a multi target chance to apply debuffs. Right, it's two sections of the attack. Ramontu Drake's Blood, Plarium's totally original idea from January 2019 that has multiple nearly identical visual similarities and replications when compared to Kazal Khan, has an ability called Blood Wings, which is depicted in the ability thumbnail as an attack where Ramontu is actually flying, that attacks all enemies and also has a chance to remove buffs on his targets. That's pretty similar, but we're not done. The passive ability for Kazal Khan, again, the champion not designed by Plarium Games, is called Ceremonial Leader and will increase the speed of the champion by a percentage for each buff on the champion when attacked. On the other side, Ramontu Dark's Drake's Blood, whatever, has a passive ability called Arrogance, which is, oddly enough, a personality trait specifically outlined by the artist in the initial lore packet, where, among a couple other bonuses, whenever an enemy character places a debuff on him, he gets his speed boosted. I hope you see where I'm going with this right mm. now. Not only is this champion extremely similar from a visual perspective, in a lot of separate ways, to a submission that was chosen as an artist's choice by the dev team, it is also similar from a mechanical perspective at the exact same time, even containing precisely similar buff types and stats, at least in terms of archetype format. The only thing removed are the support functions, while all the fundamental attack mechanics are preserved. Considering all the different layers here, I find it completely impossible to believe that this design was created full scale in 2019 as they claim. I find it completely impossible to believe that this was not crafted or at least heavily modified to be a copy after the design competition. And even if I'm correct, I see no other explanation by the way, it wouldn't even matter if they had just said, yup, we copied it, you gave us the rights while participating in the contest, so here it is. Instead, though, they said, we don't want reputational damage. We don't want to violate intellectual property rights. This isn't your design. This was crafted separately in a vacuum during January of 2019. It just has multi-layered and specific correlations all over the place at every level. So let me, let, me, let me stop right here and, and let me kind of give you guys what I'm thinking right now um, about the entire situation. I do think that Polarium probably, if we're being honest, Polarium probably took this champion and kind of put their own spin on it. Now, 
do I think that's entirely wrong? Not entirely, because especially on the internet, especially in the world of art, it, you know, whether it's something that you draw or music or on YouTube, for an example, think about thumbnails, think about titles. You can just go go type in something, right? Go ahead and take a look. There, There's not going to be a lot of originality, originality out there. You guys can see, for an example, just in the raid Shadow Legend space, a lot of the thumbnails you know, pretty much look the same. I mean, you have the, the same big faces. You've got, um, sometimes you got the aerial, the, the arrows, and you've got text. That's pretty much standard for when it comes to uh, YouTube thumbnails. Um, insane damage, you know, uh, soul, oh my, you know, you know what I mean? That whole, the, the title aspect to it. I mean, that's, that's not exactly an original thing. Hell, even take a look at my thumbnails, right? So let's go ahead and take a look, take a look at my thumbnail. Where's, where's my, where, where's my channel at? Let's take a look at my channel. By the way, guys, thank you for almost 1500 subs. I mean, look at my, look at my, my thumbnails, right? This right here is probably something that is going to be synonymous with me within the Raid Shadow Legends space. But this, these, and I'm, I'm not afraid to admit it because, you know, it, it is, it, it, it is what it is. But like, these thumbnails aren't exactly my idea these thumbnails i got from watching uh, another guy called um let me see if i can find him real quick official divine the concept for my thumbnails come from this guy and he didn't even get these thumbnails uh himself like he, he, this idea came from somewhere else you know when when it's on the internet uh, it's not exactly only going to be exclusive to you. Someone else is going to take it and they're going to put their own spin on it or they're just going to straight up jack it. Okay. Now, is it kind of like socially a dick move? Yeah. Is it morally um, wrong? Morality is a social construct. So I guess it kind of goes to the same thing. I don't necessarily think it's wrong as long as you give credit where credit is due, right? I, in all of my videos, I always let you guys know uh, if I if someone else gave me the idea for a video or if somebody gave me uh, the idea for a team, whatever it is, I'm always the first one to say, hey, this is not my idea. Um, you know, I got this from somewhere. I mean, look at look, look, the title, the title of this video. How strong is that's literally the same title that I have for all my my champion guides. How strong is Deliana? How strong is Alatreon? How strong is Duchess? You, you see what I mean? But there's nothing wrong with that, I think. I think it's OK to take something especially from a different space and kind of you know bring it over if you like it and appreciate it bring it to your own uh creation i don't think you should just one for one copy like i'm not going to straight up just take this guy's thumbnail and make my own ichigo or naruto uzumaki how strong is video you know what i mean but i'll take the idea and i'll put it back here on, on my channel because i i think it's awesome i i, I like it um back to raid stolen legends it would be one thing, I think, if Polarium said, hey, we really liked your concept. We, we liked your, your skill set that you provided. We, we liked the, 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 the idea for his design. We're going to go ahead and take that. Uh, by the way, you did share it with us, so we uh, own the rights to it in some form of capacity. Again, we don't know if that's, that's legally binding, but we liked it. Okay, and we're going to draw inspiration from it and we're going to go ahead and, and put our own spin on it, do our own thing with it. Uh, we'll, we'll give you get we'll give you credit as the original artist. But yeah, that's it. It could have been as simple as that for them to be like, hey, you know, we like it. We're going to go ahead and take it. You kind of agreed to it. You, you agreed to the terms, etc. Instead of give it, one, giving him the runaround, going back and forth and oftentimes not responding, hoping that he goes away. Um, and then stating, we came up with this before you even came up with it, and we would never do that kind of thing. As a giant corporation, we would never do anything like that to ruin our reputation. You know what I mean? Like, all you guys had to do, I think, was say that. But let's let's go ahead. Let, let, I'm just I'm just explaining to you guys why I don't think it's innately wrong to just you know take somebody's idea because just because you have an idea doesn't necessarily mean it's yours i mean you could ask just look out through history i mean einstein didn't uh well not einstein uh thomas edison 
didn't create or um what do you call it not create electricity of course he didn't create like he didn't invent the light bulb you know what i mean um we didn't invent you know modern society didn't invent the wheel there was nothing wrong with the wheel from the prehistoric ages or, or whenever wheels were invented um you know what i mean but as long as it's just getting put out there that hey you know this is not really our idea um this right here this is not mine this was by tim but he shared it with me you know what i mean is ray dying the whole concept for this video for a, a video is you know you know what i mean so you know just 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 sharing that with you guys giving my own two cents on it level to the design submission that you made let's have a call to it of course there is that that social aspect of it so don't, again don't just straight up take somebody else's thumbnail and not even give credit or even try to make a change to it but, but yeah explain all of this and then they went dark it's no secret that I dislike the product that is Raid Shadow Legends. I've been offered tens of thousands of dollars at this point through marketing agencies to shill for their service, and I don't, because I simply don't like their business. I wish Valerian would just be like, hey, Mr. Brito, give you $10,000 if you shout out Raid Shadow Legends. I'm like, oh yeah, I'll shout out fucking shout Raid Shadow Legends. You kidding me? I've been playing this game because I love it. It's just the game, I enjoy it, but I've been playing it for like five years business practices. And when I see things like this in context, it really makes me wonder how many designs come from sources who aren't given full credit? How many times has stuff like this happened? How many of the artists ever even find out about it? And why would they respond in that email chain the way that they did? Why did all of that happen? Speculating here, and I want to be crystal clear, it is exactly that speculation right now. Is it the case that they responded under the impression that their theft of intellectual property might in fact be punishable, only to then seek consultation from their legal department or whatever outside agency and ditch the communications once they knew that their terms were actually enforceable and they had every legal right to do this? I'm not sure if that's even the case, but is it possible? I think it is possible. But just because something is probably technically legal doesn't make it right. Artists work very hard, especially in competitions, especially people that are trying to break out and get more notoriety. And oh, in this sure. particular case, the artist was rather enthusiastic about the contest. He had once played the game. He enjoyed the existing champion styles and he very much wanted yeah. to participate to the best of his ability, only to see his champion or something undeniably derivative of his champion in my eyes, get created and elevated to one of the most desirable oh, yeah. positions. That, that's, probably, that's probably the most apt description that you could use to describe what happened. Undeniably derivative, meaning without a doubt comes with inspiration from um, his original champion. But, uh, but I mean, like, video games riff off of each other, right? Like, you know, um, action shooters aren't exact um aren't exactly original but nobody's gonna be like hey you know we originally got this idea for this game from call of duty but it's up to the community to just like analyze it and say hey that came from this community or the idea of uh what do you call it micro transactions who invented that you, you know what i mean it's possible in the entire game with no credit sorry i've got a habit of just ranting and you know whatever comes to my mind before i forget it edit none of the advertised rewards and adding insult to injury he was ignored and neglected during the communication process multiple times as he tried to figure out what was actually going on that's not right in the end i think that plarium games could easily have dealt with this much much better i do not believe for a single fraction of a second that this champion was fully conceived in 2019 as they claim and i hope that this will push them towards better communication at the very least and practices for any future competitions or warn artists that their work might very well be used in a similar way if they decide to participate